For today's project, we're building a full spectrum light analyzer that can analyze light from ultraviolet in ultraviolet A all the way up to infrared. To do this, we're going to use a couple of modules and an Arduino board. For the Arduino board, which will be the brains of the, of the system, I'm using the Spark Board Red Plus. This is the UNO version of it. Um, it comes with a USB-C port, USB-C port and a quickie connection, which is this port at the bottom. It also has a standard um, Adreno UNO pin format and pin layout, so you can use it for other projects as well. I have this one set um, because this board can be set to either 5 volts or 3.3 volts. I believe the Quickie system, uh, spelt Q W I C, no I K, Q W I K, is a 3.3 volt system. So I have set my controller to that. Also from Sparkfront is the Spectral UV sensor, AS7331 breakout board. This is a Quickie breakout board with connectors on both sides. It also has pins, so if you don't have a controller with this system, you can just connect it with um, cables. This is for ultraviolet, so it's got uh, three sensors on this board, a UVA sensor, UVB and UVC light sensor. For the visible spectrum, I'm using the Adafruit AS7341. Again, this has the same quickie connectors, but these, this is part of their system. Their system is almost interchangeable. It's the same connector and the same pinout, but these ones um, are tolerant to five volts, if I'm understanding correctly. Whereas the Sparkfront ones are only run on 3.3 volts. So just make sure you double check which voltage your system uses before wiring everything up. This does the visible, so it does all the way from the red, um, from the blue end of visible, all the way up to infrared. This is a no solder project, so anyone can do this. You don't need any special tools or techniques, and it's safe to do with children. To interconnect, interconnect the components, we're using the Quickie system. So that's these little cables here. There are three pin, no, four pin cables that um, you can buy along with these kits. They come in a variety of different lengths. I've just got a couple of them here. And a USB cable to connect the whole system to a computer. I'm using a USB-C cable. This is a non-solder project. So it's suitable for anyone. You don't need any additional tools. It's very simple to wire these things up using the connectors. You grab the main board first, and then you grab one of the quickie cables. Um, these were very inexpensive. I think they were like 80, 90 pence each. So not that dear. Then you plug it into uh, the first board. They are keyed connectors, so they go in one way, but not the other. So if you can't get it in, flip it over 180 degrees and put it in that way, like the old USBs used to be. And then you grab the other end of the connector and this just goes into the second board. They have connectors on both sides. If it doesn't go in, flip it over. And then it goes in. It should be a bit of pressure, but not too much. The beauty of this system is they can be daisy chained together. So here I have the Sparkfun um, connector connected to the main board, but it has two connectors on here, one on either side. So I can plug in another cable and then connect the other sensor following it in a daisy chain configuration. This puts power through the first component into the second component, and I think you can have up to six components in the chain. But certain components will use more bandwidth than others, so check what you're going to put in your chain. So same again, 
just plug in the connector and then into the final board and we'll all oh, that's it that is a complete wiring for this project just those two cables being plugged in now of course you need to connect this to a the main spark phone board spark fun board to a computer I'm going to be using a USB-C cable for this and then that goes to the computer. Obviously you can use a USB micro or USB A or whatever your board has and then connect it to the computer. To confirm it's all working I've written a um, program in processing which is written in Java to output the real-time results from the device onto a bar chart, kind of to show the full spectrum. So if I now turn over the sensors, but they were upside down and point it at the light that's beside me, you can see that the light which I have to my left is not a very good light. It produces a lot of the middle of the spectrum, um, but very little of the other sides. I can also tell by turning it over that it doesn't produce any or very, very little UV light because when I point the UV side at it, we get near zero readings. I'll share this program um, in a GitHub so people can download it if they want, so they can get real-time results out of the device. On the bottom corner of the screen, I'm sorry, I don't have a screen recorder on this Mac PC Frankenstein thing, um, is the output of the actual data. So you can see real figures of how much data. I'll capture some screen capture on a different PC. Okay, this isn't the best form factor for it. It's all strung out and the sensor's done with the points in the same direction. So I'm going to make a quick um, mount for it so we can do some more testing. So I'm, I've mounted the device in direct sunlight. So I've got lovely um, winter sunlight streaming through my window um, and it's hitting the device. Um, the readings were significantly high because it's a bright source as the sun. Um, so I've had to turn the gain down from where I was recording earlier. You can do that in the code um, by changing the, the, the gain setting on, on the visible light sensor. You can see that the UVA, B and C readings are working. Um, I'm getting 103, 17 and 2.559 for the UV sensors. So they are working. I don't know, I have to do some more research. Oh, the sun's just going behind a cloud. Um, I have to do some more research to see um, what sort of scale we're looking at for those other readings, um, whether it's the same scale as the ones for the visible light spectrum or if the scale is different, so I need to change the scaling on my chart. The sun's just moving behind clouds, so, it's, it's, so you can see it affecting it in real time as the bars go up and down, depending on how much light hits it. So this was the example I was trying to demonstrate earlier. So you can have um, you, these light filters. So these are the uh, plastic filters that are uh, filter the light. They're designed for stage work. But each filter comes with a, um, I'll get a shot of them, comes with a light spectrum analysis of which wavelengths of light it filters out. So I'm using, I've got Italian blue, which says it filters out light above 500 and no, 620 nanometers. So they will be the red bars. Then I can hold that in front of the sensor. I can put that in front of the sensors.
and you can see it blocks out a lot of the higher spectrums. The big red, dark red bar on my chart, that's infrared light. So that's approximately 800 nanometers. So that's above visible. And that's basically recording the sun's heat energy being sent to the sensor. If I made it um, gain for that one sensor, it made all the other readings so small, it was a bit silly to have it that way. So I left that one maxed out past the top of his chart. I'm going to try a green sensor because that might be better than what my blue example was. And you can see this is unfiltered light. And then I put the filter in front of it. And we can see it cuts out everything but the green channel or reduces everything but the green channel. It doesn't have any impact on infrared light which must pass straight through it. You can also create, um, take the data you can see here in this raw section here at the bottom and produce um, charts with it because you have the raw numbers. You can put that into Excel and then produce um, line charts that look like the spectrum analysis you see on websites. So I'll show an example of what I've done here with that data. Okay, so now to the software. I mainly used the two uh, libraries, one provided by SparkFun, one provided by Adafruit to get the code up and running. I combined the two examples using the two libraries and combining the code. I'll put the code I used in a GitHub link um, linked below. Um, it's very, they're very simple codes. I modified it to make it so the outputted both readings as one long string. And I also changed it so it outputted in CSV format so that the processing software um, for the real-time viewing it had an easier job to importing the data. For the SparkFun board I did have to install the additional USB driver that can be found on the SparkFun website. I'll link to that below. So how do the sensors work? Well the sensors work similar to how, how I described with these uh, colour filters. They are photodiode sensors that capture light. There are nine in the SparkFun board and three in the Adafruit board, so um, I'm reading 10 sensors out. But each of the sensors are calibrated to record only a specific wavelength of light. So they capture that wavelength and, and like a 30 nanometer wave around that wavelength. They do this by having interference filters in front of the sensor. These interference filters disruptively reflect unwanted wavelengths of light and then only allow through the designated wavelength. This allows for the spectrum to be analysed and you get to see which colour light is made out of because it's made out of all the colours. Well, natural light is made out of all the colours. Artificial light is made out of the selective band of colours. There are different LED manufacturers focus on different sets of colours within the band to make it feel more natural. I've incorporated a UV sensor on the board just to make sure that the artificial lights aren't outputting UV light. They shouldn't output UV light because that band isn't useful for, vi um, for visibility. So there was no point in engineering chips to do that. But sometimes they accidentally output it if they're manufactured badly or you have some old sort of technology like a CFL bulb which can output UV light if it's damaged. I think this is a very fun new um, educational project for people interested in science. It provides immediate real world data where you can look at a light source and then see what light wavelengths it's made out of. Um, as demonstrated in the example with the, um, LED, with the filters, it's, it's very useful to see what lengths or wavelengths of light are filtered out to make which colours. Um, it's not always as obvious as you think. You don't think, oh, it's just all red light. You, you, there are other bands of light in that. 